Welcome to Game of Roses. This is Pace Case. This is Bachelor Clues. Today's Friday, which means this is This Week in Bachelor Nation. Now, what happened this week in Bachelor Nation? (laughs) To be sure, as you can see, by the way, I'm wearing, let me get out from behind the microphone here, I'm wearing, and so is Pace Case, our Gen Tran commemorative shirts. These shirts commemorate the historic (laughs) Bachelorette season 21. (laughs) We're getting big. (laughs) Getting muscular. We're showing the the YouTube our shirts. Comment if you think um, they look good on us. You can find those shirts. Just like it. Like the YouTube video. Never a negative comment, please. Mm -mm. But you can find these shirts right now at gameofroses.co. And you got a 10% off code right now. For the next week, I believe, if you type in yes. GORE2024, G-O-R-2024, you get 10% off of the merch in our store. So go check that out. And like Pace Case said, this is on YouTube now. So if you're just listening to this, go to YouTube, like us, subscribe to us so that you get those notifications every time we release a new episode on YouTube, which is about every other day during the course of the business week. <laughs> There's, there is no it's almost constant. Uh, yes, it is almost constant. Probably can adjust is, your notification settings thusly. Exactly. Uh, however, you um, like to have but, your media delivered. But yeah, come watch us on YouTube. If you know any friends who listen to podcasts on YouTube, I know I sometimes certain podcasts I do. Mm-hmm. Go send this to them. Send this video to them. Thank you. Thank you very much. But now let's get into it, Pace Case. That's all of our business. Actually, we have one more bit of business. We're still doing the watch parties. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> We're still doing live watch parties. I'm attending. Pace Case is out of town. She is in the great white north of Minnesota. Is it snowing there? The great white north. Yeah. It's a blizzard oh, there every day, right? That's what I've heard. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm in uh, young country, Kufrain country, mm. you know, Minnesota. I'm uh, researching the heartland to, you know, mm. get out of my coastal elite bubble and see yeah. what see what those purples are up to. Definitely not Lion Dyke country. He's been banned from your country because of what he did to <laughs> Becca Kufrin. He will never be setting foot there. That said, uh, please come to these watch parties in Los Angeles, the Silver Lake neighborhood at a bar called 33 Taps. It's every Monday night from 8 to 10. I'm there. Anya, our social media director, is there. And we are watching the show with whoever wants to show up in the pit. My scream at the mm-hmm. end of today's program will be about a person who was at that, uh, our last watch party for episode Ooh. three. <laughs> yeah. I love when screams are people. <laughs> yes, this scream is a person. There's no denying that. Um, but that's it. That's all of our business. Now we can actually get into the show. And we're going to start it off like we start off every This Week in Bachelor Nation with Game, Game of Roses. Of Roses. State of the game. So, uh, a big thing happened this week. I don't know if mm-hmm. you're aware. The first Bachelor Country oh, wow. album in the history of humanity was released by an artist named Chad K. Sound familiar? I saw that your mother was supporting Paris <laughs> So that was exciting just for me. You guys what every, supporting some yeah, part of your career. Exactly. What every musician wants to to have known about their music <laughs> that their mother is supporting them. Well, I think uh, my have mom. Have I been supporting? If you look at my Spotify, guess whose whole album I've downloaded. Oh, who is it? Chad K. Me. It's oh. me. Clues. I've been listening, especially to for the wrong reasons. And I heard one of my other favorite songs mm. you're about to make. But uh, I'm so proud of you for finishing a whole album in what feels like days. Uh, it took me about a month to make the whole thing. And then it took me about that long to also figure That's out days. how to actually release it on the internet. But I did right, do that. 60 days. Yeah. And <laughs> so Fortnite. now it's everywhere. You can check it out on uh, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, Amazon, whatever. Wherever you get you your music, like it's those there. are question marks. <laughs> It's question marks in that I don't know all the things. I know Spotify exists. Oh. I think Apple Music exists or iTunes. Is iTunes still a mm-hmm. thing? And There's Apple Amazon, Music. I want to Google Play. Find... I don't know. Yeah. It's on everything. 
basically. Wherever you get music, all you have to do is type in, for the right reasons, Chad K, the letter K, just as if I was a player on Bachelor in another Mm -hmm. season where there was like a Chad S as well. Beautiful homage. Uh, Thank you very much. You can get it anywhere, and I encourage everyone to do so. This album, I made it painstakingly to be the soundtrack to your watch party at home. If you have friends over, or if you go to Mm -hmm. someone's house to watch The Bachelor Monday Nights, put this on as you're pre-gaming and having a few glasses of wine. It's The whole album is, I think, 30 minutes long, roughly. So it's kind of the perfect amount of time to just have it on as you're chatting mm-hmm. and and uh, getting ready to watch the big game. And it gets you Each in the mood. Each song has a little up. intro section where you could still be chatting. I do like that there's a long instrumental at the beginning of each song. <laughs> That's country music, baby. I mean, there's not all of them. Some of them start somewhere. right out of the gate. But like, at least the you're country music that I've started now, to. So maybe oh, I will. Well, don't let me affect your algo too much. But... I thank everybody who has been listening to this um, since it's come out just a couple of days ago. It came out on Wednesday of this week. And I would like to say this. There's one song, which we're going to be playing right here. And have we played this on this podcast before? This song? Look, we've played a couple of them. Yeah. I don't know if we've played this one or not. them everywhere. Clues has also, by the way, if you want to make reels, et cetera, of these songs, he has put each audio thing on Bachelor Clues Instagram. You can also just search it on Instagram. You can use these songs as you could any Ooh. other song on Instagram. Just search whatever the title of the song is with the name Chad K. That's at least I've found that's what you have to do or it won't pop How up. How many Chad It'll be giving you... Only me. There's a Chad Kroger, lead singer of Nickelback, but he doesn't go by Chad K. He goes by Chad Kroger. Him. Nickelback you've not heard of? No, I've heard of Nickelback. Okay. He was but like I just the don't know mastermind. like individual singers in a band. Yeah. Um, well, I'm not Chad Kroger, I wish, but you can get all these songs right now, anywhere you want to use them. Basically they exist. I think they're in TikTok, they're in YouTube, they're everywhere. So please enjoy them. And we're going to play you one right now. That's a very special song. It's called, how could you in parentheses, make love to me in parentheses, Nick's song. This song was written as a tribute to one of the greatest lines uttered in the history of our beloved game by the greatest player who has ever played the game, at least until Blake Moynes assumes the the crown next year. I would love to know what Nick Vial's reaction to this song would be. I have no idea how to get this song in front of him or make him aware of it. What do you think he would do if he heard this? I'm not sure, you know, because I think... It's not... I mean, it's, it's a little cheeky, yes, the tone of it, but the song itself is not. The idea of it is cheeky, but the song is like kind of serious. You'll see as we play it, it's a a legit country song, I think. Oh, you're a little bit cheeky, eh? (laughs) What? Cheeky. They say it on Love Island all the time. It's a bit of me. I'm sure that'll be coming up in uh, Love is Blind UK, too. Oh, I'm gutted. They say that a lot, the British players on um, Too Hot Tandle. I'm gutted. Mm -hmm. At any rate, I think if he heard this song, I think Mm -hmm. he would have very mixed emotions because I don't think he's a guy who likes anyone kind of controlling the narrative of his world. And not that this song seeks to do that, but it is something that kind of like, (laughs) yeah, it's a little like, it's an homage to him. That's what I meant it to be. And yes, I'm having Mm -hmm. some fun with it. But I also think the song is very good. So I think as much as he wouldn't want to indulge this, He would be forced Mm, to by the quality of the music itself. Exactly. And potentially, I I see there is a world in which this song specifically, if not the entire album, but this song specifically, rises to a certain level of acknowledgement within the nation, within Bachelor Nation. And it reaches some kind of break point where he is forced to at least listen to it in the privacy of his own home. I don't believe he would ever publicly admit to having listened to the song or liked it or have any opinion about it. I don't think he would ever talk about it publicly because, again, that takes some of the power away of his control of his perceived universe. So I don't think he would even acknowledge that it exists, but I don't even need that. I just want him to listen to it. I just want to somehow have the knowledge that he did. And I don't know how I would ever do that. That's classic news, you know? (laughs) Yeah, he, listen, Nick Vial, you were talking about a, a muse. Nick Vial 
is quite possibly the strongest artistic muse I have ever had in my life. The amount of artistic content no, I, I have created is. in service of my fandom of his play in our beloved game. I would count this entire podcast as part of that. What? We no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We've been doing this podcast for five I years now. I have to consent for this to be part, uh, partly mused in that direction, I would say, as co-artists. When I... Okay. Let's oh just go God, back to the face. beginning. Let's go back to, to the YouTube beginning. Just to see I'm the sorry. clues just gave me. <laughs> <laughs> we... <laughs> We'll play the song. We will get to that, I assure you. But first, let me just simply say this. When you go back and you look at the early days of this podcast, pre-podcast, what it was before we started Mm -hmm. recording ourselves talking about it, it was you and me and one third person. Yeah, Yeah. Erica, sitting in my living room watching the show as you're feverishly typing 10,000 word manifesto recaps for your own website. And I'm taking- It's called a blog, not a manifesto, clues. Uh, Okay, sure. Uh, (laughs) What do you call the book we wrote about it then? That's a manifesto. That's a manifesto, Um, for sure. Fair, as long as we're on the same page about that. But um, I would be compulsively taking thousands of photographs of the TV screen to make these weird deep fried memes of the show. And- Mm -hmm in service of learning how to make those memes, how to use all the little photo editing software on my phone, I went to Nick Vial's Instagram account and I just took every photo he made and memed it, just like put weird shit in it to kind of teach myself how to do this. So Mm. in the very early days of this, of our kind of descent into the pit, Nick Vial was the primary reason I was getting in the pit. He was the light at the bottom of it that I was chasing. And then I got down there and I found out it was just the glimmer off some dirty water. And I just kept digging. At any rate, um, I would count him as... This could have been a DM, Kevin. Oof. (laughs) Brutal. Never thought it would be used against me. Inside joke with later in our episode. Yeah, it will be explained later. All right. (laughs) Pace Case, are you ready to hear this song? Maybe for the first time, maybe for the second time. (laughs) No, I've definitely heard it once before. But now I feel like hearing it with the rest of the pit it's going to be really meaningful okay so here we go this song is called how could you in parentheses make love to me in parentheses nick's song here we go seeing other guys so why did you tell so many lies we both agreed that we'd be honest i couldn't see through your pretty disguise the way you wear those jeans and bat those eyes you said you'd protect my heart but you broke your promise but how could you make love to me if you weren't in show did you have your fun i thought i was gonna give you a ring you left me feeling empty and broken inside and i think you took me for one hell of a ride and i gotta ask you one last thing but how could you make love to me if you weren't in love with me were you just playing
Thank you. There you have it. That was Dang. How Could You, in parentheses, Make Love to Me, in parentheses, Nick's song by Chad K, a.k.a. me. So I hope I you all enjoyed chart it. chart topper. I hope so. Like I said, my goal with this is to have it reach some kind of apex where it becomes impossible for Vial to ignore. I don't know what that is. I don't know how to you know, manufacture that event. I have simply made the art, and now I hope that it can stand on its own and be good enough well, that enough people listen to it that it kind of rises through the cacophony of online noise to reach perhaps one mm. of his producers who would play it for him or something like this. I don't know. Or maybe once someone performs it at Stagecoach or Coachella. Yeah, if anybody, uh, any promoters or anything are listening for Stagecoach, happy to perform this live. What's your like DJ mask situation? I don't think it would be one. I think it's me in a like full head to toe cowboy outfit, black on black on black, black cowboy hat with like uh, like a rose motif, like a shiny rose motif. Ooh, that's what I would be. Chad Ooh. K's outfit. Chad K's well, stage. Presence. I would pay good money to see that. Uh, obviously, my favorite part is you took things from me. Mm-hmm. Bridge. An homage to end. another famous line that Nick Vial said to, I believe he said that one to Caitlin Bristow at the end of that season. You took things from me. They all blend together to me. It's just one kind of, you know, emotion about getting second place to me to the ring winner or to the leads yeah we've all been there um we have clues i'm so proud of you i thank you. think it's you know while i you know i don't know if this is the muse i would choose i'm happy for you that you have a muse <laughs> and that your creative energy is unstoppable <laughs> I just got news for you. This muse is not something I chose. This muse chose me. I was not seeking this out in any way. If you would have told me uh, five years ago or or prior to that, eventually you're going to get so deep in your Bachelor fandom that you'll make a whole album about it, I would have said, not possible. I don't really even know how to make music. Uh, but B, if I, if <laughs> I was good possible. enough, take yeah. me to the airport, <laughs> <laughs> if I was good enough to make music on my own, certainly it wouldn't be about bachelor cut to now. Mm. I have taught myself how to use all kinds of musical tools in service of this very podcast. I can now kind of make music and, uh, my fandom of the bachelor is so deep that I'm writing songs specifically about a line of dialogue uttered by mm-hmm. one player at an, after the final rose from 2015. That's I guess where it my depends what is. year you would have asked me. <laughs> right. In the last few years, I would have been like, oh, of course he's going to do that. <laughs> no, exactly. That's, That's what I'm saying. That's just how this yes, will go. <laughs> I agree. In the last few years, yes. It, it's clear that I was angry. I mean, I was talking very openly about how I wanted to do a Bachelor. I had some songs in my head and stuff. Mm-hmm. But five years ago, before we started this podcast, had you told me that, it's like nowhere in my wildest dreams or nightmares would the idea of making a Bachelor album have been in my five-year plan, let alone having a specific song about Nick Vial's um, victimization line from the Bachelor at season 10 after the final Rose show. But I mean, in a way, it's not about Bachelor. It's about the human condition. It's about love. It's about heartbreak. You know, yeah. everyone can As relate, even if they're not Bachelor fans. Yeah, and that's what I'll say about this album. It's like, you don't have to like The Bachelor to like these songs. They are generically about, mm-hmm. like you're saying, the human experience. There's a song called Hometown that fits anybody's idea of a hometown. Now that just so and happens goodbye. to... That could apply to Love Island players when they're kicked off as well. Yeah, that one is a little more specific to the see experience you, of being I'll kicked off a reality side. dating show. But... I'm go- <laughs> but I'll see them on the outside. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for indulging this. That is our state of the game. There is a, for the first time ever in the history, to my knowledge, in the history of humanity, there is a full album that is basically meant to be the soundtrack to your Bachelor fandom experience. Enjoy it. It's called For the Right Reasons. I made it under the pseudonym Chad K. I guess it's not a pseudonym. That is my real first name and last name initial. <laughs> it is a pseudonym. You don't normally put a dot there. That's true. Uh, but please enjoy and send me DMs, send me any kind of social media you're making uh, with it. Tag me in it. I'll repost all that stuff. Like I said, these songs are on TikTok. They're on Instagram. You can use them as you see fit. And now 
Let's move on, Pace Case, to that next portion of our program where we're talking about all the movements of the numbers of our favorite players in their social media, as well as the ratings of our beloved game. This is... This Week in Games. All right, last week we saw a little bit of a dip in the ratings for Jen Trans Historic Bachelor at Season 21. She bled off about 17% in the demo, dropping from a .45 on Night 1 to a .37. However, this week we've seen an increase, a 24.32% increase. She is now Let's sitting at a point. Oh, that's a quarter. Four six. Point four six in the demo. She actually has scored a higher demo rating by a uh, tenth of a percent there, or tenth of a point over night one, which was a point four five. She's hitting roughly the same amount of, of raw viewers at two point eight million that she did on night one. And more impressively, if we start to talk at and look, if we start to talk about and look at the network TV landscape. Where does Gen Trans sit in comparison to all other network shows? Well, I can tell you. Mm -hmm. tell she me. sits at the top of the mountain. Yes. 0.46 crushed every other network program this past Monday night. Your closest competitor was a new episode of American Ninja Warrior on NBC, scoring a 0.32. She you then a -N -W? had. What's that? She be A N W? She beat A and W. She also beat a special on CBS about Bob Newhart, recently deceased, mm. called Bob Newhart: A okay. Legacy of Laughter. His uh, post mortem special on CBS only scored a point three. Then we had Name That Tune, a new episode on Fox, getting a point two. And then, of course, we had CW bringing up the rear with a new episode of All American Homecoming with a point zero seven. That is drawing in three hundred and sixty thousand viewers. Hmm. But congrats to Jen well, Tran. Congrats, Jen. Dominance. We we believe part of this dip last week might have had to do with the RNC, which was uh taking over and some people said it preempted their their episode. Yeah. Actually. I saw some DMs to that effect too. It had no real effect in Los Angeles, but I think anybody in a earlier time zone, you know, heading toward the East Coast might have gotten screwed up by it. Well, I hope that we are going to see these numbers only go up as the weeks go on. And speaking of numbers going up, Jen Trans crown gains this week. She gained 8,000 followers on Instagram, bringing her to 250,000 followers. On TikTok, she gained 3.1K, bringing her to 124.7K. This is slow growth, but it's kind of what's expected at this point mm -hmm. in the season. Once you get into like episode three, four, five, six, this is what we call the regular season right before hometowns, which is the playoffs. Uh, this kind of happens. It just the drags out. The games tend to stagnate. Yeah. Yeah. Then once we get I around think, I think playoffs, we'll it'll start shooting up again. Yeah. Um, nonetheless, 250K is respectable. I'm still predicting mm -hmm. a 1 million for her by the end of the season. I think I she can that. do this. Opto because 2024. I, it's not just Opto. It's what I'm seeing in those promos. It's it's Opto Promo 2024. Promo Opto 2024. Um, the gains are possible. Love Island USA yeah. is showing us that. So totally. Time will tell. Now for the top five Instagram gains. These are differences based on two weeks out and the numbers versus today. In fifth place, Jonathan Johnson. Put on 1,661 followers, bringing him to 4.5K. In fourth place, that old Aaron Herb got his sabbatical in this week in what was my era of the game, what was your era of the game. He put on 3.1K, and that takes him to a total of 14K. In third place, unseen floater and group date winner, <laughs> briefly, Austin Ott, gained 3.9K, bringing him to 17,000 Instagram followers. Is there? Should we give that a name, the unseen floater, like Phantom Floater or something? He really wasn't in the, <laughs> the episode. Phantom. Uh, <laughs> they literally just show his kiss from yeah. his group date win. And he's, he's skulking in the shadows every once in a while. Um, in second place, we have chemistry slash rivalry player Sam McKinney gaining 4.6K, bringing him to 27.6K total. And taking that top spot, 
voluntary nudity player and rivalry player Devin Strader gained 5k this week, bringing him to 12.5k. Was that voluntary? I so I put voluntary because I feel like the force nudity was the whole group. Mm -hmm. The thong for me was the voluntary aspect. I'll go with but, that. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's interpretive. He was basically <laughs> like, if I'm going to do this, you're getting Glad it you all. Asked. All right, just just curious. That was in my mind. That was the thong play. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. Let's move on to top five TikTok gains. This race is still wide open. In fifth place, we've got. <laughs> Thomas Azano gaining 95 followers. He's got 225 It's almost total. noise Jeez. at the bottom of Jeez. these lists. This is rough. Fourth place, Brendan Barm Barnum gained 129, bringing him to 163 total. In third place, we got Sam McKinney gaining 943 new pairs of eyeballs for 2.5K total. In second place, we got Spencer, the night is over, DLP already tinged Conley, nice. who gained 1,816, bringing him to 2,764 followers on TikTok. And in first place this week is old Aaron Herb. Pulling ahead in the TikTok race after his self-elimination, he gained 4,082 followers, bringing him to a grand total of 4,445. Still sub 5K for the entire leaders chart. Mm -hmm. brutal i mean just brutal hope you did uh okay and not sabbatical don't quit your sabbatical <laughs> top five instagram chart <laughs> number five is sabbatical <laughs> player old Aaron herb herby derby is at 14k <laughs> don't quit your day sabbatical night one guy brett harris is in fourth place with a total of 14.5k respectable for a night one guy in my opinion Third place, the Phantom Floater, Austin Ott, with 17,000 Instagram followers. Second place, the Dolphin Dive Natural, Sam McKinney, 27.6K. And first place is still Kiss and Love Virgin and Public Love Level 3 or Sam Najad at 186K. Still the one to beat. Top five God, TikTok bro. chart. Fifth place, Sam M. McKinney, 2.5K. Fourth place is Dylan Buckor, 2.687K. Third place, Spencer Conley, 2.7K. Second place, Old Aaron Herb, 4.4K. And first place, Sam Najad, 180,000 TikTok followers. Doesn't seem like anyone's going to beat that, maybe at least until playoffs. Yeah, we'll see. But that's where we our numbers see. are. Again, congrats to Jen Tran uh, for correcting that dip in ratings last week that, like Pace Case said, is likely due to the RNC preempting our beloved game in many areas of this great nation. Now, let's move on to all those tids that are fit to print. This is... Bachelor Nation News. First up in Bachelor Nation News, Jared and Ashley Iaconetti welcomed their second baby into our dying world this week. Their first child, Dawson Dimitri Hybon, whom they welcomed in January of 2022, was named after James Vanderbeek's titular character from Dawson's Creek. And for baby number two, the Iaconettis went true? back to... What's that? He's named after Dawson's Creek? Yeah. We covered that. You don't remember that? We did a whole story about that. I just assumed it wasn't to do with Dawson's Creek for some reason, but. I think, no, it was. It's Dawson's Creek. Um, I would have gone with Pacey. <laughs> well. <laughs> Sorry. Their first child was named after James Vanderbeek's titular character from Dawson's Creek. And for baby number two, the Aya Canettis went back to the same pop culture naming technique, this time naming their child after the actor who played Darth Vader, Hayden Christensen. Hmm. Hayden Cruz Highbon was born on Monday of this week, and Jared took to Instagram to explain the naming choice by writing, We joked about naming him Anakin as I'm a big Star Wars fan and Ashley fangirled over Hayden Christensen as a teen. That sparked the idea for the name Hayden. It took a while to firmly decide on it because of the alliteration with our last name, but ultimately, we felt it fit. I was like, wait, how is that alliteration with Ayakanei? <laughs> I thought the exact same thing. 
<laughs> but it's not. It's Highbon. I always have to remind myself. Oh yeah, yeah. his name is Highbon, and Hayden their baby's names are Highbon. Highbon. Hayden yeah. Cruz Highbon. Right. But that's not where the celebrity references in their second child's name end. Little Hayden's middle name, Cruz, is a reference to the highest ranking member of the Church of Scientology, Tom Cruise. <laughs> Congrats to the Iaconettis on this next chapter in their lives. I I love this naming strategy. I I think I'll adopt it as well. Didn't Wasn't the first baby two had Brady in his name? I'll be like, our baby is going to be something. named Jesse Chris Pace. <laughs> <laughs> oh no it was dawson dimitri highbon was their first child mm. yeah i i agree they keep it interesting and then it's a whole round of news about how they named the baby nobody else is getting that type of yeah. coverage when or, they have babies like celebrities like when um when it named the child apple yeah yeah exactly up next in bachelor nation news some news from an island love island usa specifically the recently concluded season six of Love Island USA on Peacock has shattered viewership numbers of the previous seasons to become the most watched season of the show. Some are attributing this explosion in popularity to the new host, Vanderpump Ariana Maddox, but others are pointing to the outstanding casting of the season. That's what I would go with. With the inclusion of the breakout star, Leia Kateb, who entered the season with 12K followers on Instagram and currently sits at two million instagram followers let's freaking go she was my mvp of the season i'm mm. glad to see the numbers reflect this it's less than a week after the finale so she's only going up later this week leah will kick off her postseason social media growth tour with an interview on call her daddy the number two podcast in the world congrats to leah on this unprecedented success and to the rest of the cast of love island usa season six who haven't done too bad themselves with several players approaching the 1 million mark. Fear me. This is what That's I'm going to say about this. Plenty of people have been in my DMs. You got to watch the season. You got to watch the season, et cetera, et cetera. And I've been putting it off and saying, I don't have time. I don't have time. Here's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to watch episode one of this in Clues Corner sometime within the next 48 hours. It's going to pop up. Are you up. serious? Yes. And I'm going to do it on 1.5 times speed. And I'm going to see if people can handle rolling with me with that. And if they can, if I get no blowback from it, I'm going to keep doing it and keep increasing the speed with every episode until I find the point at which others can comfortably watch. And I will try to do the whole season. I don't think people can go above two times speed is my prediction. I can. But I guess... Sound off in the comments on the Clues Corner if you can keep up. Now I'm going to rewatch this with you. Mm -hmm. I'll put the um, captions on as well. That makes speed watching much easier. Oh, whoa. Benevolent Clues putting the captions on. Yeah. But I, I have to test it out. On everything. And when I go to the movies, I can't understand a single thing that's happening. Because I no hate captions. captions. But when you're watching at speed... They do help, so I will put them on. And I simply will say this. When you can't hear the words people are saying, the captions do help. <laughs> you can hear the words. You don't really need to hear everything everybody's saying to understand what they're saying. Your brain, if it gets trained well enough, can fill in the missing pieces of audio. You just need to hear. Well, I would say that's a disservice to the casting of Love Island USA this season. I mean, Leah, Taylor, Janae some some of Brie the mm. other the casting is really good um, yeah Rob oh my god I want to dress as Rob for Halloween in just like naked with overalls on and a bucket hat and a little snake tattoo all right I just feel that this is so. a, a big enough pop culture thing that I should be aware of it I should know what's going on in the season so I'm going to watch it and if I'm going to watch it I might as well record myself watching it that's how, that's where I'm at in life it. now yeah, if, I, if I'm I, watching I really any TV show. I really didn't think you were going to give in on this one, so I'm really excited. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it as quick as I can, but I'm also doing Too Hot to Handle Season 6, which is a very interesting season, to say the least. And I'm going to be doing uh, something that comes up in a later one. news item, so just wait for that one. Okay. What's that? I am watching Too Hot to Handle this season. Yeah, I'm I'm up to the fourth episode now. I've caught up to everything that's been dropped, and so I've seen favorites? it all. Um, I love Brie. I love yes. Catherine, I think, Catherine is the breakout is star of this so season. Far. Yes. Um, Catherine is a Leah type. Yeah. 
Damari, I would say his face play is like on another level. Uh, and Charlie has, has grown good. on me. I don't think he's a good player, oh, like but he's him. growing on me a little bit. I like him. Up. Anyways. Oh, your turn. Up next in Bachelor Nation News, the hunt for Sergeant Jenkins continues. After the brutal error that was last week's self-elimination play by old Aaron Erb, many within the fourth audience were skeptical of the validity of the narrative that OAE was taking a sabbatical to attend fighter pilot training school. And it should be no surprise that in a Reddit investigation that was launched this week into oh the identity gosh. of the Air Force Sergeant, with whom Herb supposedly had an on-camera conversation. So far, three possible names, along with photo verification and links to their official Air Force personnel pages, have come to the top of the list for the mysterious Sergeant Jenkins. We have Sergeant Crystal <laughs> Jenkins, uh, who is a staff sergeant at the 42nd Air Base Wing Pacific Affairs. We have also Sergeant Rebecca Jenkins, whose biography reads Senior Master Sergeant a Rebecca A female M sergeant. Jenkins. I think both of these first two are. Oh, my God. And we have Sergeant Tony B. Jenkins, who is the Chief Master Sergeant in the United States Air Force. I don't know. All this is on Reddit, and these, um, you know, photos and stuff they have up are all on, like, their official military, I guess, like, LinkedIn-style <laughs> kind of pages. It just has little paragraphs <laughs> about who they are and what planes they've flown and stuff. Um, hmm. I don't know. Are any of these Sergeant Jenkins is the real Sergeant Jenkins? We may never know. But for his part in debunking the fake Air Force training conspiracy, OAE himself took to Instagram to post a carousel of himself in various Air Force uniforms during the first phase of training, along with a caption that reads, quote, For the, wow, the show is so scripted crowd, phase one of the plan is in motion. Introducing for the first time, second Lieutenant Herb, salute emoji, next stop, Air Force pilot training, airplane emoji i thought he was leaving for air force pilot training right and that would have been about stop. two months ago well i think he's got to go through some kind of like basic training then you kick up to the the next level i don't know i don't know how any of this works but congrats to Interesting. oe on the next phase of his training and hopefully will one day real we will sergeant know. jenkins please step up and come on our podcast i'd love that I love that. Up next in Bachelor Nation news, Love is Blind is back. And for the first time ever, the hit Netflix show was shot in the UK. Love is Blind UK is hosted by Matt and Emma Willis, who have been married since 2008 and share three children. Matt is best known as the singer of the pop punk band Busted, while Emma has presented Big Brother as well as the UK edition of Netflix competition series The Circle. The 11 episode series premieres on Netflix August 7th with four episodes. The next four will premiere on August 14th and the last two on August 21st. And I will be covering the entire series in Clues Corner on our Patreon. I cannot hmm. wait for this. I think this thing is going to explode. Uh, Love is Blind is obviously the biggest reality dating show in the world by a large margin, at least in terms mm -hmm. of how uh, many viewers it has. And I, I just think anytime you do a UK version of something, for me, for my good. money, it's always hilarious. These people are yeah. just like intrinsically way funnier, I think, than, uh, than the American counterparts, generally speaking. Like dating show stars they really yeah. are and i'm very curious how love island versus love is blind uk will fare in terms of casting this mm -hmm. news prompted my scream which i will get to <laughs> and finally in bachelor nation news jed wyatt has finally found the girl for whom he can be Mr. Right. The former <laughs> Anna Brown heartbreaker was joined in the legally binding contract of marriage with civilian fitness coach Ellen Decker on July 20th at a wedding attended by several other luminaries from within the nation, including Hannah Godwin and Dylan Barber. The ceremony took place at the Woodlands at Five Gables in Jed's native Tennessee. Congrats to Wyatt and Decker on this start to their lives together. Do you think she ever lets him play that song for her? Or is that just like, uh-uh, dude. Don't do anything that would remind me of that era of your life. 
like um, our conversation before we started recording, I think she knows that's part of the deal she signed up for is <laughs> he is constantly jingling. Yeah. Dad can't but do you talk, think... but Dad can jingle. But like that song that's specifically, I'll song. Be Your Mr. Right Girl. You think she allows that one to be played? Yeah. That's right. probably why she's dating him. That's pure speculation. Yeah. But you're telling me this woman didn't watch Hannah Brown's season? Doesn't Never heard that song before? I think she heard it, but I'm saying, doesn't she want him to write her a new song? Mm. I'll be your real Mr. Right girl. Yeah. I'll be your Mr. Right girl. He just crowbars yeah. in real right there. <laughs> Look, I changed it up, baby. Now it's just for you. I don't know. Could be. I don't know. Time will tell. Well, that's it. That's all the news that's fit to print this week. Now we're going to move on to discussing all of those plays that our favorite players made off the field and on their telephones, in their social media. This is... The Parasocial Play, 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 Play of the Week. Huge week for parasocial plays, including a couple ones that will go down in legendary status. First, Rachel Lindsay posted a video conversation in which she discusses not having a spark on The Bachelorette, the divorce, and if she would go on The Traders. Quote, the news came as such a shock to people, this is about the divorce, because you didn't know the incident, the problems, we never saw the breakdown, but they were, it's a Taylor Swift song. She describes, quote, that the electric moment was getting a call from ESPN saying they wanted me to come to Barstool and I'm such a sports fan. That's my background. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is it. I made it. Then they were like, no, we're not giving you a job. We're just your fans. I want to meet you. <laughs> but now a That's year so later brutal. from that, I'm filling in on my favorite TV show. <laughs> um, I'm a huge fan. And now I get to sit at this table. That was huge for me. Congrats, Lindsay. What a brutal call to get. Like, oh my God, this is it. They're offering me a job to cover sports on bars. So, oh no. You just want me to autograph a eight and a half by 11. Mm -hmm. You want me to meet your niece? Cool. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll do it. In the number four position of the top five parasocial plays of the week, cuteness. Previous gays playing crown and newly head shaven Joey Grazzi and his ring winner Kelsey Anderson posed in boots and a white wedding dress taught this week. They posted their engagement photos and video reels. In one clip, Kelsey shared a glowing orb floating around the couple and she believes this is a sign from her mother who passed away six years ago and never got to meet her future husband except in butterfly form the two gorgeous reels got 2.3 million instagram views and 1.6 million views respectively i loved these pictures they were great pictures and she is just that ptc of my mom is deceased, but she appears to me in other ways through butterflies, orbs, what have you. It mm -hmm. just, it's continual and it never gets old. It's always a good play. Unbelievable. I love these reels. I love their outfits. Do you think Jake would notice if I put us both in these outfits for our engagement photos? Absolutely not. I think you're safe. Go for it. I'm I like, fully I support think, this. Babe, you need to shave your head? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You need to shave your head. I'm Can sorry, you also take the, some tennis lessons? Vibe. Yeah. You just start recreating the entire season. Here, wear these boots and do this dance. Ha ha ha. While you're wearing shorts. <laughs> I fully support it. Our number three top parasocial play this week was OAE sabbatical play, fake or not. <laughs> we talked about this in the news, but Irby Derby, a.k.a. Old Aaron Herb, shared receipts to prove the haters wrong and emphasize he is for TRR. In the seven image post this week in full Air Force taught with the captain, the captain, the caption <laughs> for the while the show is so scripted crowd phase. One of the plan is in motion, introducing for the first time second Lieutenant Herb. Salute emoji. <sighs> and Noah. Yeah. Young Noah Herb wrote in the cap in the comments, you don't need to explain anything. Um, mad emoji. I've seen so, how hard you've worked for this for the last few years. Go make our country proud. Uh, and I don't know what emoji this is. I put on night mode, so now it's all the the opposite mm -hmm. the colors. The emojis are hard to see. Very it confusing. looks like the a like look burnt. big eyes emoji, I guess. I don't know. 
All I'll simply say Proud is... Proud emoji, probably. He doth protest too much. Ooh. No, I think this is real. I think he's like really at the Air Force School. Photoshop. Maybe 1% of me believes that Aaron Herb and Noah Herb are not real people. <laughs> that they're, yeah, that they're manufactured like CGI characters. 1%. It's only 1% of me. But I believe that about everybody, and myself included. In what our second... Me? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think we could all be... There's a 1% chance you think I'm CGI. Not CGI, but like, you know, whatever the equivalent is. That we're living in a simulation, some kind of a video game. Mm. Okay. Moving on. Our number two I'm spot. I'm telling you, I the... have consciousness also. I'm What's that? I'm telling you. I have consciousness also clues. I don't I'm even know if I have it. You. I do. You think Maybe you, you do. don't know. If you I do. think I do, but we don't know. We don't know what human consciousness is. How are we to know these things? We barely even know what a damn dream is. Something all of us have every night. And we don't even know how that works. I don't know. I know how to dream. I dream big. Clues. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I dream big too. Like delivering the number two uh, parasocial play of the week. Which is, uh, this following play would have been our parasocial play of the week any other week. This um, could have been a DM Kevin. I'm sure you're aware of that now floating around the internet. Exclamation points. You did not read yeah. it. Sorry. Like this that. could have been a DM Kevin. Exclamation, 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 exclamation. After Rachel Lindsay's ring winner and chiropractor Brian Abaslo posted his content about his divorce coach, Winter Games winner, BIP USA, ring winner and BIP Canada bartender, Kevin went. Got into the comment section writing. <laughs> also, it's like Kevin went. Sorry. He wrote, man, this can't be real life. I don't say cringe often, but fuck, dude. F-A-W-K. Uh, crying eyes emoji and like, what is that? Sucking in air through cringe. teeth emoji. Cringe emoji. In quotes, private time, but three T's. Also on Instagram. This ain't the way to do it. To which... Abasolo clapped back at Kevin C. Went. This could have been a DM, Kevin. <laughs> All good, though. I know the pressure you're under to do so. However, I was asked to be a guest on my former divorce coach's series on the divorce experience and process. I agreed, as I believe, in the services he offers. Not sure what conclusions you were jumping to, but maybe you can watch the video on Saturday, then come back to apologize. Brutal exchange here. Why is Kevin mm -hmm. C. Went doing this? right now why is he coming out of nowhere so i feel like he's implying the pressure you're under to do so is his wife astrid who was mm -hmm. on rachel Lindsay's season that's the only thing i can extrapolate from this i have no idea i was not aware of any um underlying rivalry uh going on between these two Every time I see this could have been a DM, Kevin, I laugh so hard, though. It mm. doesn't stop being funny to me. What was Kevin went on? He was on the first season of Bachelorette Canada where he won. He was the ring winner. And then he was on, he won Winter BIP Games. USA. And then he was on the fifth season winter of BIP Games. USA. And yeah, I don't know. Hosting. I, so, yeah, it's his wife is friends with rachel Lindsay, so he feels some need to come in here I, I don't are they friends i have no idea i don't know either that's what i'm saying it just seemed like a a, a voice out of nowhere this is a mm -hmm. phantom floater coming through and just dropping this bomb and then a basilo this could have been a dm kevin that to me is a t-shirt i want that on mugs mm -hmm. get a tattoo of it don't really i mean i'm not suggesting anyone should do that it just as a joke i do think I mean, I would like it on a T-shirt, though. Yeah. Fair. fair. Mm. I mean, it's it's very funny. And uh, Kevin went. I really... He's a journeyman himself. That's a lot of seasons and different franchises to be on. Well, also Good to job, come Kevin. from... I mean, he was the ring winner of BIP Canada, so he's a cut above, shall we say, and the ring winner of the first season. He's the Ryan Sutter of that franchise. And I mean, he was not, a ring winner on Winter Games. Yeah. So he's he's done some work, put in his time, but uh, 
still just a strange a strange name to be popping up in the mm-hmm. the very public in the Rachel Lindsay and Brian Abbasolo divorce uh, proceedings. It's like, why is he part of this now? <laughs> Absolutely no idea. He did it. Uh, sound Smart. off in the YouTube comments if you have any additional information on that or Sergeant Jenkins. Correct. All of these were strong plays. However, there can only be one winner. Our parasocial play of the week goes to a series of ferocious parasocial plays by our current crown, Jen Tran. First, she followed Game of Roses on TikTok. Then mm. she quizzed the, quote, men in the bar stool office on Bachelor Lingo Asking them first, do you know what a hooju is? It has long been our know. goal to get one of our terms into the game, and we have seen Tyler Cameron use the word hooju in an interview. Crown Charity Lawson used it on her Instagram. Ring winner Blake Moines used it on Instagram, etc. But we've never seen the current Crown asking someone for the definition of a hooju. Will we see this word make it into the document finally? Yes, and I think it's going to happen in this manner. I think the producers are going to contact you and me, Pace Case, and say, do you want to host a Huju group date? Where, this will be on the next season of Bachelor, all the women on the group date have to do Huju training, which we will supply, hopefully with the help of Kelsey Weir, one of the greatest Hujuers of all time. We will train these women how to do a Huju, then they will have to do a Huju competition. It will be a play for time. The best Hujuer will get that extra time at the end of the date. I'm simply saying this is going to happen. I'm speaking it into reality. I've been doing mm-hmm. some work what with my dreams, astral projections. I think I can make this come come true. Thank you. My pleasure. Pretty and awesome. Pretty shocking. I agree. Pretty shocking anything beat. Um, could have been a DM, Kevin. My next goal with the Huju, because I think that term is the one that we've created that has obviously been sucked up the most into the main game. My next goal for it is for us to be credited with it. For Jen Trent <laughs> to say, do you know what a Huju is? And when they're like, no, she then tells them what it is and says, Game of Roses coined it. Mm. At some point, that will happen. Uh, second grade but, acknowledgement. Yeah, second grade acknowledgement. A greater acknowledgement. Hmm. We also had uh, some good creature play this week, parasocially. And... It was Bachelorette Season 21 villain Sam McKinney who caught our eye the most and our Parasocial Creature of the Week award for a three-slide main grid post featuring his two adorable canines along with a caption that read, only focusing on what's in my control, 100% emoji. These dogs are cute as hell. There ain't no other way to put it. Highly encourage you to go check that out. Think uh, think what you will about Sam McKinney, but uh, you will fall in love with these dogs. There's There's no way around that. Unless you're looking at the polarized image of these dogs, and then they look like demons. Whoa, what? FYI. (laughs) All right. (laughs) I guess that brings us... In the the polarized... (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) No problem. That brings us straight to the pit where all demons live. And uh, Pace Case and I are about to dive deep into the pit right now to issue forth our screams about how our fandom of our beloved game has radically altered us as people and entities in this universe. This is... Screams from from the pit! pit. We both previewed our screams this week. I previewed mine during (laughs) the Love is Blind UK news segment. That news came out. And I finished Love Island USA and I was needing, you know, I was needing my fix Mm -hmm. of my, you know, my favorite type of content, reality dating shows. And I started a couple different shows because Mm -hmm. of this. Number one, Traders UK season one. One of the players is ultimately on Love Island USA, which was also part of what what brought me into this oh, and wow. the other one is love is blind sweden season one i looked up what are the best international love is blind seasons and the ai search said sweden i'm not sure if it's this season or what but mm-hmm. i am now going deeper and deeper so the guy who's on love island that was also on traders uk season one was a mm-hmm. civilian on traders uk season one yes and so from that did that fame from that show have anything to do with the casting of Love Island? I'm imagining so. Interesting. I haven't watched the whole season. An interesting path. So he took, okay, interesting. Right? 
makes I've me want to watch it all. Path before. No, I, I don't think that path will ever exist again because I don't think they're going to do a lot of civilians and traders anymore. Right. They're definitely not in American true. traders. I don't know about the well, other countries. It's also not the most recent UK season either. So it's interesting. Yeah. It's like a couple years later. All right. So that's your scream. You got two new it's, reality it's, shows it's going out on. There for, uh, hope out there for civilians. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, that's my scream is that I'm now, you know, You're watching even so more desperate reality TV. for this that content that I am. I'm going into other languages. <laughs> yeah, has to be done. Um, yeah. All right. Well, my screen this week has to do with our watch parties that we have every Monday night at 33 Taps in Silver Lake, a suburb of Los Put Angeles, California. Headphone for this one. Please. Yeah, both headphones. This is a two headphone story. So I was there Monday night with Anya our social media manager, who has put this entire event together and done a great job doing so. And as we're kind of, she and I are standing up toward the front of the bar, just preparing. There's maybe 10 minutes until the, the show's about to begin. And a guy walks up to me and hands me some raffle tickets. We do raffles at these. Everybody can have raffle tickets to win uh, books and discount codes in our merch store, etc. And so this guy comes Blues up and he hands some me. incredibly difficult trivia, which we sometimes oh do at commercials. <laughs> that's a that's my double scream. I started reading those trivia questions this time, and it, I like looked out into the audience, and I just saw people with like thousand yard stares. After I was like halfway through a paragraph that wasn't even a question, it was just setting the stage for what was happening in Bachelor season five and Mandy J. Jeffries and Trish Schneider and all this shit. Anyways, that's not my scream. My scream is this. Oh no! I know I'm writing the questions too hard. I will amend that. Um. My scream is this. This man walks up to me and he hands me these raffle tickets and I say, thanks, you know, uh, are you a big Bachelor fan? And he's like, not really, um, but I'm, I think I'm going to start becoming one and that's why I'm here tonight or whatever. I'm like, oh, cool. So like what turned you on to The Bachelor? And he's like, uh, have you ever watched that Nathan Fielder show? And I was like, uh, are you talking about The Curse? And he's like, no, it's like where he's going around New York with a camera and I'm like, you mean how to with John Wilson? And he's like, yeah. There was a guy on that show that had like all these grids and stuff uh, and like data of Bachelor. And I was like, whoa, that's crazy. And then I saw that there was going to be a Bachelor watch party at this bar. So me and my friends came out. Do you know the guy I'm talking about? And I Stop. looked him in the eyes and I Are said, you serious? Yeah. I looked him in the eyes and I go, I am that guy. And he lost <laughs> his mind. And he was like, what? You were the guy in that show? And I was like, yes, dude. Welcome, welcome. And I started getting, like, doing kind of a drag. He didn't really need to be dragging to the pit. He was already there. Like, he was literally standing in this watch party surrounded by pit members. But I kind of dragged him in any, any way a little bit more, you know, and said, oh, you're mm -hmm. going to love this season. It's got this and this and this. And this is why it's <laughs> historical. And, you know, you need to learn about this and no, 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 no. And I think I got him in. So if you're out there listening to this, sir, thank you for coming there. Uh, almost sight unseen. Like, I don't think he knew what Game of Roses was or anything. He was just there for a bachelor watch party because he had seen me on How To With John Wilson. And what, Googled bachelor watch party? Like, I don't know. How? Maybe, yeah, just started to become kind of a fan of The Bachelor and was like, oh, I live in this neighborhood and showed up and didn't realize Dang. that he was talking to the very person who was in that show that he saw. It's fascinating to me. He's like, no, that guy was a maniac. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, you have no idea. Just wait. I was so confused. <laughs> like what? I immediately started doing Nathan Fielder connections in that. And I was like, was it the Nathan for you episode where he pretends to be the bachelor? Yeah, that's me too. I was going down those same paths. And then he was like, yeah, there was this guy on it that had all these bachelor data sheets. And I was like, oh no, you mean how to with John Wilson and... I'm the guy you're Pretty talking specific. about. There's only yeah. one, one reference that meets that. But I was just thinking sir. like in his brain, what must have been happening when he was like, oh yeah, I watched this weird show. There was a bachelor guy in it. Now I'm at this bachelor viewing party. Here's these tickets. Wait. And it's like, oh, wait a minute. I'm talking to that guy. It's so bizarre. Booze, you never yeah. said Game of Roses in How To with John Wilson. Like there's no That's connection correct. to the podcast in that episode. I did. So I did like say it by the way. It just didn't well, make the cut. In the, in the document. Yeah. No, I, I know you tried. But <laughs> the fact that you were able to, <laughs> I, the fact that you were able to drag someone in with just like that little bit is so impressive. Yeah. And also like what a small world. That's really, that's hard to believe. I agree. Um, but those are our screams. We got one more scream here for you now. If you listen to this program with regularity, you know that we're not the only people in the pit screaming to the heavens 
everyone down here has screams. And if you'd like to submit your scream to potentially be played right here during this very segment, every week on This Week in Bachelor Nation, all you got to do is go to patreon.com slash Game of Roses. You join us in the bottom of the pit. You get access to the Game of Roses Discord. You get on the channel that says Screams from the Pit, and you upload a one minute or shorter audio recording of your scream. Today, we have one from someone named Kalen Clock, or maybe Cloak. Uh, are you ready to listen to it? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Hello, Pace Case, Bachelor Clues, and my fellow pit dwellers. I'm screaming to you all the way from London, which is a scream in itself because no one that I know in London watches The Bachelor. But last night I reached a whole new level of the pit when I was sat in a pub watching the Euros final of England versus Spain, which the entire nation of England was gripped to the TV for. During the game, I looked out the window of the pub and saw a beautiful brunette woman and without even having to pause for two seconds, recognized her as Ariel Frankel from Zach's season of The Bachelor. Even though the game was at a very crucial stage and I did not want to miss a second, I put my drink down, ran out of the pub, and outed myself as a Bachelor Nation stand to Ariel herself. I missed about 15 minutes of this very important game that I'd been looking forward to just to chat to her, and I do not regret a second. No one else there recognized her, but I sure did. Sending greetings and much love from London and the bottom of the pit to all of you. Fascinating. This I is a British. There are two components to this <laughs> scream. Me too, actually. Um, it sounds so elegant. Yeah. I was sat in a pub when I saw before me the grand visage of one Ariel Frankel from Zach Sharpe's <laughs> season. Of, I know. I, I do my best. Uh, this good. scream is, is intricate because there's two parts to it, both of which are mm -hmm. kind of surface level screams, but when combined together equal a deeper scream. One is mm. once you are in the pit, you will just begin to have these encounters with people from the game. They will simply come into your life. You will turn your head in a crowd, and oh my God, there is, in this case, Ariel Frankel. For me, that has been Not Robbie Hayes. It, it's been a bunch. I've seen Nick Vial here in Los Angeles just like running across the street as I'm at a red light. I don't even know, probably half a dozen times. LA obviously has a high concentration, but that's one component of this, that the pit will bring these people to you. Mm -hmm. The other component is you are now willing to sacrifice your engagement with another piece of media, specifically another sport at this point, to go engage with your fandom of this show. It is starting to gobble up the things that you would normally be doing. It, it starts to usurp them, uh, mm. in, at least in terms of uh, their importance in your life. And so when combined, it results in one of these beautiful meetings where you get to go outside and have a conversation with Ariel Frankel for 15 minutes uh, and I absolutely love it. I love that this type of stuff happens, that deep fandom of this gets rewarded by chance mm -hmm. encounters. And I look, say what you will about manifestations and astral projections and or is there power in intention You're and all, all that kind of thing. always talking about astral projection. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, does the, the combined power of the pit make these things happen? They seem to happen quite There's a bit. There's no way to know I that it know. doesn't. Exactly. I don't know. My favorite part about this is that it's not its not Hannah Brown. Mm -hmm. It's not Rachel Lindsay. No, you know, no offense, but there are very few people who would recognize Ariel Frankel. Like I, like yeah. how many people do you think would recognize her? <sighs> I mean, how I do know. you even calculate this number? That season was getting in the three to I four million really viewers. Oh, huh? No. He's Sorry. <laughs> you're doing way more math than I, than just I intended. Numbers start coming out of my head. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. There's like just the deep fandom, I would say, would generally yeah. recognize this person. Um, I agree with congratulations. that. Congratulations. Thank you for forsaking, you know, that other sport for something that's uh, much more powerful. And uh, I think we we need to spread it to the UK some more. Yeah, I agree. Just I mean, like love is blind. What what did she finish on his season? She was third place, I think. That's pretty high up there. What? I bet she was. Yeah. I bet she was in contention for Bachelorette. She was. Yeah. In my mind, she I'm was pretty like sure. Six. 
Let me see. Ariel Frankel. Oh, I get her confused. No. I Ninth row ceremony. She finished with, third. Um, another one. She got knocked out in the the um, fantasy suite row ceremony. Oh, okay. So that's actually higher than I had thought. So yeah. downgrade the scream. She came in with a standy talking about her dress ripping. Do you want me to go through her entire season? <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your scream. And again, if anybody else out there wants to submit your scream, just join us on mm-hmm. Patreon and get in that Discord and fire it off. And uh, Anya picks the best ones and sends them to us, and we play them here. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Screams too. I mean, really, it sounds like yeah. what we're doing is much more professional. A scream from across the pond. <laughs> Do you think I could get British kids if I just talked to them with my accent? You know what you could do? I think this would work. I've thought about this a lot, actually, strangely. Um, what? I don't know why, but I have thought about this a lot. How could you affect your child's accent? I think you just put Bridgerton on, you like always. Yeah, he, he's starting to get an accent now. Uh, I think you just put Bridgerton and like British media on your TV yeah. always, like Harry Potter, Ooh. et cetera, et cetera. And then it's almost like uh, learning another language or something. I think they would get a slight British accent from it. Okay, I'm going to do that. Not a problem okay. for me. Yeah. Uh, that same character who's on Love Island USA and, and Traders UK was, uh, he said that Harry Potter is British culture. I agree with that. So I feel like it's American culture as well. Interesting. What movies do you play on the holidays? Who? Harry Potter. Me? Anyone. I don't really celebrate the holidays. Well, that's our show. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We will be back on uh, Monday with a live show, which you can get access to on our Patreon at 4.30 p.m. PST. That's half an hour before our beloved game starts East Coast time every Monday. I will be at 33 Taps next Monday night watching episode four of Jen Trans Historic Bachelorette season 21 with whoever's going to show up. And uh, we will have our recap of that, that episode shirt, out next please. Tuesday. What's that? Better wash that shirt before Monday. I wash it every time I wear it. That's called laundry. All right, Thank you for joining thing. us, everyone. <laughs> Until next week. Have a good weekend. Praise be Dark Lord Palmer. Please rate this podcast. Please review this podcast. Please get a friend to listen to us. And then please rate this podcast. Please review this podcast. Please get a friend to listen to us. And then please rate this podcast. Please review this podcast. Please get a friend to listen to us and then